Good morning. Well, welcome back. Uh, this is Professor Marsh, and this is uh, Principles of Financial Accounting at Newberry College in the spring of 2022. Uh, we're going to have our second lecture now, uh, the first uh, substantive one, although I would encourage you to go back and watch the welcome uh, and introduction lecture because uh, we will be having weekly quizzes, and the, the answer to one of the uh, quizzes uh, is in that first introductory lecture. So I would encourage you to go back and take a look at it uh, and enjoy it. I also will uh, advise you that uh, <clears throat> in going back and looking at the lecture myself, uh, I see that I made a mistake in something I said. Uh, I did in fact uh, begin my career as a bank teller when I was 16, uh, just before I turned 17 uh, in the uh, uh, year between my junior and senior years, but that was between the junior and senior years of high school, not college. So I was not in college uh, in finishing my junior year uh, at age 16. So uh, uh, apologize for the, inc the incorrect information there. Uh, and uh, obviously I'm well past those ages, uh, maybe by about 50 years uh, right now. Uh, so in this uh, chapter number one uh, in your materials, in your book, and that's your free online book that I've uh, put the link uh, in your, uh, uh, in your uh, syllabus, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have five learning objectives in chapter five. And the first is to be able to distinguish between, on the one hand, uh, financial accounting, which is one of uh, of the disciplines in accounting, and on the other side, managerial accounting. So uh, if you become an accountant or use accounting regularly or sit for the CPA exam, you have to know both financial accounting and managerial accounting. And this course will concentrate on financial accounting, but we will explain uh, how it differs from managerial accounting. Uh, also, a uh, second learning objective is to identify the users of accounting information uh, and how they apply and use that information. Uh, then we will describe typical accounting activities and the role that accountants play in identifying, recording, and reporting uh, financial activities. Uh, then we'll explain why accounting is important to business stakeholders, uh, not stockholders, but stakeholders, and there are many stakeholders of a business. And then we'll describe the varied career paths open to individuals with an accounting education. So let's get started on that first objective, which is to explain the importance of accounting and distinguish it uh, between, distinguish between financial and managerial accounting. So accounting <clears throat> is defined as the process of organizing, analyzing, and communicating financial information that is used uh, for decision-making. And uh, <clears throat> uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, go back and look at the uh, welcome video uh, for one of the answers uh, to this uh, chapter's quiz. But what accounting uh, seeks to answer uh, are some of these important questions uh, that business stakeholders uh, will have, uh, or any organization stakeholders will have. Are we profitable? Uh, can we make payroll? Um, will we have uh, enough money to pay off our loan? Um, uh, will we have enough money to pay dividends or other distributions uh, to our owners, uh, to our shareholders in a corporation, to our partners in a partnership, or to our members in a limited liability company? But those are the owners of the business. And uh, is the business going to generate uh, sufficient uh, excess funds to be able uh, to give a return uh, to those owners. That's a very important uh, question and accounting can answer it. Financial accounting measures the performance of a organization using financial reports and it communicates results to those outside of the organization who may have an interest in the company's performance, such as investors and creditors. Managerial accounting uses both financial and non-financial information to aid in decision making. So that's uh, that's that for uh, financial and managerial accounting. So basically, financial accounting is where we have uh, a series of financial statements um, 
the income statement, uh, the balance sheet, uh, the uh, statement of shareholder uh, equity, and the uh, statement of cash flow, cash flows. And <clears throat> those are standardized reports uh, which are sent uh, to various stakeholders. Uh, they're used by people in the business, but they're also used uh, very importantly uh, by the uh, uh, creditors of the business, uh, by uh, uh, outside regulatory agencies uh, such as the IRS, uh, SEC, other government agencies, uh, and, and other stakeholders as well. So uh, that's financial accounting. Managerial accounting tends to be uh, more fluid uh, in the uh, types of reports uh, that are prepared by managerial accounting, and they're designed to give information to managers uh, and other employees within the business. So financial accounting reports to outsiders, uh, managerial accounting typically uh, will report information uh, needed by uh, those inside the business managers and not managerial employees. <clears throat> All right. Second learning objective. Let's identify the users of accounting information and how they apply that information. So the primary goal of accounting is to provide accurate and timely information to decision makers. Accountants provide information to both internal and external unit users. Uh, financial accounting measures an organization's performance in monetary terms, and accountants use common conventions to prepare and convey financial information. And in this section, we're introduced to the concept of a transaction, and a transaction is an activity or an event that has a cost or value in a business, and accountants have to quantify those uh, activities uh, and then also there are many different types of transactions so accountants need to uh, classify uh, those events or activities uh, and you will learn uh, to identify and then properly account for many of the common types of transactions uh, that a business or other organization will have that could be sales purchases leases loans uh, all the things that you know about as transactions, but as accountants, you have to uh, quantify them and then also classify them. Uh, now, a lot of you uh, who have been in business may already be, you know, performing accounting functions, and there are many ways uh, to give yourself a head start. A lot of people learn by doing, by working in a business and using a, uh, particularly for small businesses, a simple accounting system called QuickBooks, and that's described uh, in and referred to uh, several times uh, in this section of chapter one. So QuickBooks, uh, uh, it's a, a shorthand way uh, to learn a system of accounting that's computerized, and it's used by a lot of small businesses. Now, financial accounting is governed by a set of rules, and it's called generally accepted accounting principles, or G-A-A-P, which is often pronounced as GAAP. And GAAP is promulgated by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB, the F-A-S-B, Financial Accounting Standards Board. And so they uh, come up with rules and regulations with respect to uh, the reporting uh, on the books of a company and those standard financial statements that we just mentioned a while ago, the income statement, balance sheet, uh, statement of shareholders' equity, and statement of cash flows. And so they, the uh, FASB comes up with the rules. The rules are called GAAP, uh, and those are the rules uh, for, uh, you know, most businesses that prepare and report uh, their financial statements uh, in an audited uh, framework. So for an audited a financial statement, and uh, that's uh, uh, there are companies that have higher standards even than that that have to ap apply SEC rules on reporting, uh, and those are called reporting companies. And these are public companies uh, that issue securities to the general public, uh, and this is really 
uh, perhaps the uh, you know the the height of auditing and accounting uh, is to work on a uh, SEC uh, client. So financial accounting is historical in nature, uh, but a series of historical events can be useful in establishing uh, predictions. And financial accounting is intended for use by both internal and external users. Managerial accounting. <coughs> Excuse me. Managerial accounting is primarily intended for internal users. And take a look at Figure 1.3. And this is a printout of Figure 1.3, which is in your materials. It's a great comparison of managerial and financial accounting. So. Uh, what it does is it uh, uh, disc uh, compares uh, in the center column financial accounting uh, with managerial accounting uh, in the uh, right-hand column uh, on a number of uh, um, dynamics. Uh, one is uh, who are the users of the reports and for financial accounting the users of the reports are going to be uh, external users, stockholders, creditors, regulators. Uh, the users of managerial accounting will be internal type users, managers, officers, and other non-managerial employees. The types of reports uh, that are created in financial accounting are financial statements, such as the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, etc. In managerial accounting, they are internal reports, uh, oftentimes uh, job cost sheets, uh, cost of goods manufactured, production cost reports, those sorts of things that talk about the internal efficiency and operation of the business. The frequency of the reports uh, for financial accounting are typically, you know, one of two, either quarterly reports or annual reports. Um, although it's, it's certainly possible in a large enough business you would have monthly reports uh, prepared under financial accounting uh, rules, but typically it's quarterly or annually. Uh, certainly for reporting companies, for the SEC clients, uh, those are going to be uh, the uh, two time frames. And for managerial accounting, uh, the reports are as frequently as needed. Uh, so uh, if you find that uh, you have some inefficiencies something you need to address. Uh, you may uh, prepare some special reports on an ad hoc or as needed basis. Uh, the purpose of the reports, uh, help those external users make decisions, uh, credit terms, investment, other decisions. What interest rate can you borrow at? Well, that might depend on your financial statement, what your, you know, what your profitability is, what your cash flow is, what your financial security and stability is, how leveraged are you already? Uh, with managerial accounting, the purpose of the report is to, to assist the internal users in the planning and control decision-making process. So, uh, you know, those <clears throat> those reports may be, you know, do we do we purchase assets or do we lease assets? You know, what are the terms? What are the credit terms? Uh, you know, for those alternative decisions. Uh, the focus of reports uh, pertains to the company as a whole. Uh, for a financial accounting, and that uses the gap structure that we just talked about, uh, the generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, and uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, with financial accounting, you're going to be preparing a report uh, which is audited, and that could be either a public or a private company. Uh, and uh, the uh, report will be accompanied uh, by a report from the auditor uh, that says whether or not uh, these uh, financial statements are prepared fairly in accordance uh, with generally accepted accounting principles. And if there are any exceptions or qualifications uh, uh, with respect to that opinion. So uh, qualifications uh, are typically <coughs> not making you uh, more qualified in the sense that you have higher credentials to issue that report. A qualification typically indicates that there's some weakness or exception uh, in the reporting uh, of the uh, financial statements under GAAP uh, by that company, and that may be a uh, cause for alarm. Uh, so qualifications are not necessarily good uh, when we're talking about accounting under GAAP. Now, the focus of reports for managerial accounting 
<coughs> pertain to department sections of the business. Uh, there's very detailed reporting and there's no gap constraint. You can do the uh, accounting however the manager wants it done, uh, whatever particular details uh, they uh, they may want to see. They might want to report on, uh, you know, how many uh, widgets uh, were wasted uh, in the manufacturing process, how many of those uh, <coughs> items were defective, uh, and that, uh, that kind of specific report uh, might be important for operations management, even though it's not important uh, overall for uh, financial accounting uh, purposes. Although, for financial accounting purposes, it may be indication of some other weaknesses. Uh, nature of reports. Uh, the financial accounting reports are typically monetary. For managerial accounting, you can have man you can have monetary and, and non-monetary information, like the number of widgets would be non-monetary. A verification of reports. So uh, if they're verified in financial accounting, they are audited by a CPA, a certified public accountant. <clears throat> Remember from the first lecture, I am a CPA. Uh, I can tell you I have never issued an audit report. Many CPAs never, ever audit or certify a financial statement. The only auditing I've ever done uh, was to assist in taking inventory uh, at a textile factory uh, in the, uh, I think it was New Year's Day, 1982. Uh, just before I got my CPA certificate, I was sent out uh, to the sweater factory to count the number of sweaters. And uh, that uh, uh, was a very interesting experience that perhaps we'll have time to uh, revisit as we go along. Uh, or perhaps uh, if I ever teach the auditing class, uh, I can tell you about that experience. Uh, managerial accounting, there's no independent audits. Uh, managerial accounting reports are typically just prepared uh, in accordance with the manager's instructions and sent to the management and they use it as they see fit. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, second of two objectives. I'm going to end uh, this lecture right now. It's been about uh, 17 and a half minutes, uh, and we'll see you the next time and do the rest of the chapter. Until then, uh, have a great day. Uh, don't forget to keep up with your reading, uh, and I will release the first quiz tomorrow, uh, which will be Friday, uh, February 4th, and ask you to complete it and uh, 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 put it, you know, put your answers into uh, Wolf Den no later than Monday, uh, the seventh. So, anyhow, have a great uh, afternoon, and we'll talk with you again soon. Bye bye.